How y'all doing? It's Jared. It's a BRS replicant. The word that comes to my mind when flipping this knife really is easy. This knife just is easy to flip. It does make flipping easier, right? And I'm not the first person to say that. There's been a couple people that have said the, said the same thing. And it really is. I mean, it does honestly do what you want it to better. Do you see that little mistake I just did right there when it actually rolled around? It didn't quite go into the same spot. Do you see that? I That was me making a mistake, but it actually is still just in the position where I can correct it and keep going, you know? This knife seems to want to, it is more forgiving than a lot of other knives, right? And that doesn't mean that it makes flipping, learning how to flip easier, you know what I mean? This isn't gonna make, actually learning how to flip easier it's not but if you actually have the experience and you actually know how to already do the tricks it really does make that simpler it does make it easier to do especially you know if you throw if i throw it up into comparison to something like this 58 or this 87 58 excuse me this is a benchmade 87 and this knife honestly that was an interesting one this knife honestly i think I'm gonna stop talking while I flip. I think is a is a little bit better of a flipper. It moves through the air better. It carries its momentum better. It just hits the mark better if I do my part. You know I mean, if I'm not actually making a mistake, the replicant seems to want to go where I want it to go, even if I make a little bit of a mistake. You see that there? I didn't quite have enough speed when I started that first that first rollover but it still carried through but it is fat this knife is large you know if you're used to flipping something smaller if you're used to flipping something like a 51 this knife definitely is I mean it's huge it's fat but it's not heavy it doesn't weigh a whole lot there's not a whole lot of weight behind it and so I still do have to add a decent amount of energy to, into actually getting it to to go around you know what I mean it's not like it it's just easier you know I'm putting less energy in there if there was something opposed to like this you know this tachyon 3 right here from microtech because yeah I mean I barely put any energy into this thing and it comes flying around because it's on ball bearings and the handles barely weigh anything and so it doesn't take a whole lot to actually get them to go into that full range of circular motion and it's actually the same thing with you know like 51 this is a 1601 51 and it's the same thing. You can see how much risk flip. I have to put more energy actually into getting this thing to come around. There's a lot of similarities in that to a heavier bally saw. Because if you go to something like this 63 right here, this is a Benchmade 63. And I'm still adding more energy, but it carries it better. You know, once the energy's there, it just doesn't want to seem to stop. So it's all at the beginning. There's less of a flick and more of just a little bit of speed going into it right the the brs here you can see it's all right at the beginning that whole motion is just one quick motion right at the beginning and the handles come all the way around it's because once that momentum is actually pointed in the correct direction the design of the knife and the overall you know just where it's balanced and the weight carries it you know continues the motion in the you know in the actual proper direction and so it really does seem to be more designed for the aspect you know the actual sport of flipping so if you're familiar with brs the replicant the alpha beast was the predecessor to this in their lineup and it was the first high volume production bally song to really be straight designed around the actual sport of flipping right this was its predecessor and so I think that's really what it excels at most. And I'll get in, once I actually get in onto the table, I'll you know, have a little bit more of the actual critiques of it as an overall knife in itself. But as a flipper, this thing is just a whole lot of fun. But I think it's the best, probably not. But talk more about that in a minute. Get down onto the table. There's a few different aspects that come into the design of a knife, right, that I really look at, that, that I just, that's one of the reasons that I love knives, is you've got the overall aesthetic, 
design? The, how does it look? How are the lines? How is it appealing to the actual eye? Does it look good? Is it attractive? And then there's the ergonomics. You know, how does it actually feel in hand? How does it, how long can I hold it? What can I do with it? How comfortable is it? You know, how many grips can I hold it in? With a ballet song, how long are the handles? How big is it? You know, things like that. And then there's the functional aspect of it. You know, is it functional? Does it actually work? How hard will it work? How hard can I beat on it? How how overbuilt is it? You know, how much, what kind of functionality is it actually designed towards? Is it a fighter? Is it a utility knife? Is it, you know, what, you know, whatever it's designed for, is it functional in that aspect? And then there's the mechanical aspect of it, right? And this is really where this knife is very interesting to me, is the mechanical design aspects of this actual knife. Because there's some very interesting choices made in this thing. The handle slabs here, right? If I hold, it up, hold this thing up next to this 51 right here, right? It's a Benchmade 51, 1601 Blade HQ exclusive. That's why it's got the green scales on it. But look at the difference in the thickness of the actual slabs, the actual liners themselves. They're both titanium liners with G10 scales on there, right? Look at the difference in those sizes. It's massive. It's fat. It's a lot thicker of an actual liner than what's in the 51. And the same thing with this backspace. This is a steel backspace, and this is a titanium backspace. And so the weight in this handle is actually more distributed through the overall length of the handle because you don't have as much weight in the back here because you're using a titanium backspacer and you've got thicker liners, right? There's more actual metal. There's more material coming down the length of the handle. And so that actually dis distributes the weight of the handles in such a way that's kind of counterbalanced to way the way that the blade is balanced. Because if you look at the blade, there's, I mean, that's thin. There's basically nothing there. And then it flares up into this crazy thing and they call it a scorpion tail clip point and it just looks you know but it's all crazy but I mean there it's massive and it's fat and it's huge and it's actually got a decent stock thickness and so there's a whole lot of steel right up here at the tip and so that brings all of the weight out to the end of this blade all the way out to the end of this knife right which is important when you're actually flying when it's actually you know flipping through the air when you're trying to do all of those really intricate movements having the you know that perfect weight distribution what their idea of perfect would be in the you know in the actual designers of this knife the guys over at BR that is how they they actually achieved that right and i just love it because it's fun to look at and pick apart and like why do you, why do i think that they did this and why do i think that they did the things that they did and it's just a very interesting overall knife because it's extremely successful they chose to do these things they made these decisions and it worked this thing is excellent it really does flip a lot better than majority of other knives. The only knife I would say that actually flips better than this, in my opinion, that I own right now is the Benchmade 87. I think this thing flips better, but this is a $600 knife. You know what I mean? It's twice the price of the, the actual replicant here. It may be a little bit easier to find than the replicant. These things are hard, a little bit hard to come by, but that's a really expensive channel constructed titanium knife. This isn't entry level you know this is definitely on the higher end of the ballet song market but it's still an obtainable knife you know this is still something that you can beat up you can you can get your hands on it. you know what i mean it's not going to cost you as much as a glock you know it's going to cost you as much as a used glock which is a big difference you know when when you're comparing things like knives as well as the actual just going on with the construction here the latch right because this thing doesn't have a spring latch spring latches have been around for a really long time they were trying to improve the overall design of a ballet song you know the overall focus and hit that point in the market of just ooh, it's so cool you know it's so tactical and it looks cool and it's got all the cool features and it does all these things. It's got ball bearings and it's channel constructed and it has a spring latch and you know it gives you everything that the market suggests that you want. And that's not really what BRS did with you know something like this latch because this is just a traditional T-latch. They made it work really well because it needed to stay out of the way. So they made a, it stay out of the way in such a way where it still doesn't weigh anything. There's basically no material here. That What is this? I mean, that thing probably weighs like one-tenth of an ounce, something like that. And so there's very little weight discrepancy between the actual handles. Ignore the pocket clip. That was me. I put that pocket clip on there. So that's kind of doesn't really 
encounter in what I'm saying here. But I mean, even then, there isn't a whole lot of weight discrepancy between the two handles because there's just not a whole lot of mechanism going on in there to actually give you that latch, which isn't something that you can say about, well, let's switch up the 51, go with the Flytanium one here. But you can see just the amount of material that's in here to create this latch. The latch itself probably weighs almost the same. The, the handle is a lot lighter. So the ratio between the weight that actually matters and then there's just more stuff there's all of these crazy things going on in there and there's the two pins and it's just a lot more weight to actually create this little system here so there's more of a discrepancy in this knife in the 51 just in the overall design of the latch i'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because i love the spring latch not having a spring latch actually takes this thing away from gives it a major negative. It doesn't take it away in my opinion, but it gives it a major negative as far as a defensive knife. A defensive knife or an offensive knife, something you're gonna carry for defense or fighting, whatever it's gonna be, not having that spring latch really is inhibiting because you have to undo the latch, pull this out of your pocket and unsnap that latch, which, I mean, it takes a, an eighth of a second, you know, something like that. But when you're in, you know, you, you know this goes to, you know, crazy, gun guy, which I kind of am, honestly, but I mean, that eighth of a second matters. It really does. And so not being, you know, having a harder time getting this knife out opposed to something you can just flick open and have it immediately available because it's the same thing with a ballet song. You mean a ballet song doesn't take a whole lot of time to open. You don't have to do all these crazy tricks to actually get it out and just have the blade out. You can just flip it open. You mean you can get this thing out just as fast as you can get out something like a folder, you know? But having that spring latch and being able to actually just squeeze the hands together shortens the time down. Having to actually move this thing and, and you, you know, undo it is a negative and that aspect. But that's really the only negative to point to having a T-latch because I love the way that it clicks around. You can hear it. I love the way that that latch sounds and just the overall clank of the knife. It does have an excellent sound, especially since it's sitting on these Zen pins. There's something about the way that the Zen pin, when a Zen pin hits the handle opposed to something like a Tang pin, right? So here's another Zen pin knife. You can hear it. It sounds different opposed to something with a Tang pin. I still say that that's a better flipper, but I love the way that Zen pins sound. And then the latch is just accentuated in the way that this thing moves through the air. It just sounds so good. It's a very satisfying knife to flip. And that's really where I think it excels. If, you know, I've been thinking about this. You've got like the cool knife, the really cool factor. This is what's gonna make everybody ooh and ah, and it's got a spring latch and it's pretty and it just looks really good. And then you've got the utility factor that's more practical and you can actually use it. And it's really light and it just slips into your pocket. And it's not gonna gather cheese and the crazy fuller. And then you've got the actual flipper. Then you've got the, the sporting implement, the one that's actually designed to specifically to be manipulated and to have fun with and actually flip through the air and so you know and they all are about in the same price range you're going to be paying about three hundred dollars for them if you can actually find these knives and so that's really where this thing sticks in my mind this is a dedicated implement for the sport of flipping and it's fantastic for that i mean it's not saying that it wouldn't work for self-defense because honestly well, i mean what do you think <laughs> it's gonna work you know and it's going to work for EDC. It's going to do really whatever you want it to do, but it's not going to be the best at it. What it really is going to be the best at is flipping. And so that is something, honestly, you need to consider when you're thinking about buying a ballet song. If, you do, you know, if you're saving up $300 to buy a ballet song and you really want to carry it, you, know, you want to carry it for EDC or you want to do all of these things, maybe you do want to replicate, but you just want the alt blade, a craze from this little crazy scorpion tip tonto. So you can pry a little bit. You can do some more work with the tip because look at the tip on this thing. It's so ferocious. I absolutely love it. But at the same point, that's the negative as far as hard work. That's the, the, you know, it's not the best thing for just overall use, but it's so dope. Look at that thing. Yeah, I really do like it, you know, but I mean, it does have its negatives and its positives all over this knife. I definitely like it. That's a BRS replicant from Blade Runner Systems. 
Yeah. I want a channel constructed alpha beast. When are those going to be coming out? Shit. That's it. Y'all have a good one.